Hi, Mama Dr. Tochi here with today's class on family totems. Family totems, what are they? How do we know what these family totems are? How do they impact our lives and our spirituality? That's what we're going to be talking about in today's class. So I encourage you to go get the drink, get the snack, go get the notebook and the pen, get ready to take notes. We are going to have some forbidden fruit today, stuff that folks won't tell you because they don't even know it. Thanks for coming back. A little bit of housekeeping before we get into it. If you are a subscriber, thank you so much for being part of my family. If you are a member, double thank you to you for financially supporting the content that I put out here. I couldn't do it without you. I encourage you to subscribe and turn all notifications on so that you will always know when I put out good content like this. If you'd like to be a member and get the perks and benefits of being a member of the Dr. Tochi family, I encourage you to click the button the join button you see below this video. If you don't see that button, just realize it's not yet available in your country or region yet, okay? When you are a member of my channel, you get special videos that are not made available to the public that has more details, more information. We also have members only live streams and, and you can also order stuff from my website, products and services at a discount for your membership level. Okay, so let's get into today's class. One of the questions I've been asked is how do I know uh, the spirit guides or guide <clears throat> who are affiliated with my family? Okay, do I have to do a divination to find this out? In today's class, I'm going to talk about some clues um, that you can use to find out if certain kinds of spirit guides are affiliated with your family. They can serve as a starting point for your own research into your own family, into your own lineage, or even community to find out what kinds of spirit guides are affiliated or aligned with your family lineage. As a reminder, the ancient people affiliated with spirit guides for good reason. There is no one who would go and have an agreement or a covenant with a spirit guide to destroy their own family. No one would do that. So it doesn't matter what they are saying in, in religion that, you know, people who have spirit guides in your family, you need to curse them and bind them and throw them away, that they're evil. It's not true. There are usually very cogent reasons why people would say, I want to work with the spirit guide. I want this particular spirit guide to help my family. Okay. Now, remember that religion started out as a coping mechanism. People started using religion to help them understand their environment and understand their experiences. Okay. Religion was a way that people in ancient times used it was a way that they used to give themselves hope and, and comfort and certainty. If this happens, it's because of this. If this happens, it's because of that. If there's lightning, there's a reason for it, and this is what it means. If there's a pestilence in the land, okay, and people are being exterminated or dying from this pestilence, there is something behind it. Unfortunately, nowadays, religion has turned from uh, a coping mechanism to a control mechanism. And people are no longer empowered with knowledge to help their lives or their spirituality. But instead, they're being controlled. So we have a situation where people 
have been indoctrinated or taught to demonize their own spirit guides, the same spirit guides that their four parents engaged with to help the family. And religionists will say to you, oh, if you engage the help of a spirit guide, it will always demand something terrible from you in the end. You know, they have a saying that the devil doesn't give you something without a terrible price. And that is not true. Um, that is absolutely not true. Back in the day, people needed children. If you didn't have children who would help you in the fields or help you uh, take care of your cattle, you would die. It was as simple as that. If you didn't have enough children and a lot of children, because remember the infant mortality was, was high back in the day, all over the world. I'm not talking about any specific culture or country or region. <clears throat> it was all over, even here in the Americas. People used to have a lot of children because the infant mortality rate was high. People tended to have kids and kids died a lot back in the day. So they would have more kids because the idea behind it is if you have more kids, you have higher chances of having those who will survive and grow to become adults. So people would have kids. And so there were some families, for instance, that had difficulties with this. They were having very high mortality, infant mortality rates where they were, their, their infants, their children, little ones were dying. And, and it, it, looks like, it looked like their families would, be, would, would die off. And so they would engage the help of certain spirit guides to help the longevity of their family, to ensure that not only would they have children, but that their children would survive. So you can see that it's nonsensical to believe that someone would go and make an agreement with a spirit guide to wipe out their own family. Some families were desperately poor. You know, they were dying of hunger. They, again, would engage with certain spirit guides to prosper them so that they wouldn't die out from hunger. No one in their right mind wants to die from hunger. So we find out that in these families, and again, a lot of these families back in the day didn't write, they didn't read, they didn't write. They handed down information orally or through carvings and paintings and statues or names or stories about the spirit guides who helped them. Okay. And what kind of things needed to be done to maintain the, <clears throat> the positive or beneficial um, influence of these spirit guides in their families. Some families um, remembered these guides in their to as totems through their names. So you would find in a particular family they had a very distinctive name. Or they would say their agreement was every first son would bear this name or every first daughter would bear this name. This is that family's way to carry information about that spirit guide through their lineage. I had a consultation once with a young lady who was at loggerheads with her mother-in-law because in their family, it was an Arab, uh, Arab family. In their family, the first son always had to be named Abbas. And Abbas in Arabic means the lion. And she was like, why should my son have a name Abbas? We're in America, we're Americanized. I want a sexy name for my son. And the mother-in-law said, it is the family tradition that the first son always be named Abbas. And the make a long story short, 
I had to explain to the young lady that that was pointing to the spirit guide that was prospering and taking care of that family. And that was the agreement their ancestors had in that family. And for prosperity to continue, for their strength, political strength, financial strength, all kinds of strength, physical strength to continue in that family, they had to give that name to their first son in recognition of that spirit guide that manifested to them as a lion. After that explanation, she felt better. There are some people who their family name may be Abbas. And I'm using this as, a, as an example. You know, this happens around the world. So I'm not just saying this is for Arab families or just in the Arabic world. It's in every culture. You might find out that if the spirit guide taking care of that family is in lion-like form or behaves like a lion or performs like a lion, functions like a lion, they may have lion in their names. So you might have Abbas in their language, in Arabic or whatever language they have. They may have variation of that lion in their name. That They might say, okay, um, I don't want to have an Arabic name. I want an English name. So I'm going to call my son Lion or Lionel. Or I want it in a Spanish form. I can say Lyon, you know, or even in a French form. Okay. But you will see that they will carry that forward and say every first son or the family name must always represent or indicate or point back to lion. In their family, they could also point back to that spirit guide through certain statues or carvings or paintings they have in that family. And you might see that in their emblems as well. Okay, they might have a coat of arms and you'll see lions there. They might have statues at their front gate of lions, uh, statues at their front door, lions, decoration sculptures around the house, lion. And a child in that family might say, but why do we have lions all over the place and our, our, you know, monogrammed and our napkins or whatever pictures, whatnot. And the parents will say, this is our family emblem. But the real reason it's there, because that is the indication, the symbol of the spirit guide that is caring for that family, that is aligned with that family. And as long as they are displaying these symbols, their benefits continue. We have a saying in, in spiritual practice, if you elevate your spirit guides, they will elevate you. If you hide your spirit guides, they will hide you. Now, some people unconsciously know this and some people consciously know this. Now, you might have another family uh, that may have taboos, things they may not eat. And those things they may not eat points back to their spirit guide. I did tell a story a while ago in some other video class about a family, a young man whose father said, you may not eat dog meat. The young man went about his business, went to another part of the country, ate dog meat and came back to report to his father. Well, I ate dog meat and nothing happened. You said if we eat dog meat, we will die. Well, obviously I didn't die. And his father was upset. And I said to him, the reason why your father said you can't eat dog meat and your father may not know it is because the guardian, uh, the, the, uh, not the guardian spirit, the spirit guide for your family is the dog. And he said, how did you know that? Well, it's my job to know these things. And he said, my father later told me the story of his great, 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 great grandfather who was a medicine man. 
and he had this famous dog that helped him in all his his spiritual exploits and as in gratitude to that dog and for what that dog did and those spirit controlling the dog he said my family and I will never eat dog meat again and that was the covenant that was the agreement he had and they were always protected by dogs always protected by dog spirit so in gratitude they would not kill and eat dogs. So sometimes some of these taboos will come back to us or come down to us in a scary format. If you do this, you'll die. If you do this, that. But the idea behind it is to preserve a spiritual secret. And we need to take the time to go behind that and understand what the spiritual secret is. So let's say we're dealing with the Abbas family here again. If indeed their family totem is a lion, they cannot hurt lions, they cannot maltreat lions, they cannot eat lions. It will be a taboo for them. Another thing um, that comes up <clears throat> when, with respect to um, family totems is... Um, what what's this other one? Exclamations. The language that people use. We know in our current culture, people will say things, oh, geez, you know, or, oh, damn, or hell, or what the devil. But when it comes to family totems, you would find out that they would have very unique exclamations they make in their family. For example, they may say, uh, uh, and let me just make this up. They may say, oh, the lions are here, you know, something happens. And, and you notice everybody in that family says it, everybody in that community says, oh, the lions are here, or roaring lions, or uh, what the fire lions are you doing? Or, or, you know, like parents, when they're trying to, when they're in conflict with their children, let the lions eat you over there or let the lions bite you over there. You, you know how it is. Okay. Um, if I catch you doing that again, the lions of my ancestors will come and eat you. So when you have unique statements or expressions like that, that is often an indicator to the kind of Spirit guide that is the totem for that family. I mentioned uh, in a previous class and previous post about uh, one of the uh, most famous governor generals of Canada, uh, Marie, uh, I forget her last name right now, who was from or who is from Haiti. Her family totem is the water spirit guide. And so when she became governor general of Canada and had her emblem designed, it had two water spirits on it. And you, when you look at her history so far, you can see she's had an illustrious career, illustrious life, uh, over 20 uh, honorary doctorate degrees because she elevated and made visible her the spirit guides of her lineage, the spirit guides that helped her. And because of that, she made them visible, they made her visible. And that was really, really interesting because here you have a governor general over a complete country, Canada, making her spirit guides visible and acknowledged. So these are some of the benefits we can get uh, from elevating and venerating our family totems. Again, when we talk about common exclamations, we are not uh, saying that every exclamation someone makes points to their spirit guide. 
like I said, for example, people say, oh, Jesus or, or Jesus Christ or Jesus. It doesn't mean that Jesus is their spirit guide for their family. It, it's a common uh, religious exclamation that even non-Christians make. But if the exclamation the person makes is unique, or if you find in their family they have lions all over the place, they're into lions, they love lions, you know, lions is a common theme, you know, or the family name, or they have a situation where every first child must be named after a lion, then chances are, the guiding spirit guide of that family is related to the lion, has connection to the lion, is represented or functions like a lion in their family. And so you can start look, thinking, okay, what do lions do? They protect, they hunt, they take care of, they represent strength, they represent power. And so when, when I look at a situation like that, my my sense is that their ancestors needed power. They needed physical power, maybe for their agricultural endeavors. Maybe they were warriors and they needed that physical power to be great warriors, to always defeat in battle. Don't let people who are into religion convince you and tell you that these things are terrible, devilish, demonic, and so forth. Spirit guides in lineages, in communities, have a preserving function. The reason why people of ancient days went out of their ways to find out about these guides and align with them was for survival. There are people today who ignore their family totems, and suffer as a result. They go into religion. Religion says, turn your back on that and, and just obey us and do what we say and you'll be okay. And they find out that they're not okay. And they're there for one year, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, 50 years, and they are still not okay. Use this as an opportunity to do the necessary research to find out the spirit totems or uh, or the spirit guides who are symbolized as totems in your family. Align with them and see how things go well for you in life if you haven't already done so. So I hope you enjoyed today's class on family totems. Let me know in the comment section if you enjoyed this class. Say I if you did. E-Y-E-I. And let me know what you think about today's class in the comment section below this video. If you need to get a hold of me for divinations, consultations, please go to my website, tochi.us. I only do transactions through my website, okay? I don't do transactions on WhatsApp and Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. I don't chat on those platforms either, unless I'm doing work with you, okay? If you need your spiritual products, and services, please go to my website. There's a wealth of courses and books and classes, so many things going on. You have no excuse not to live an activated life, spiritual lifestyle. That, that material's out there for you. I encourage you to go through my store. We're constantly putting new stuff in there to help you. Get them, use them, enjoy them. That's what they're there for. If you need spiritual practice coaching, you want to design your own spiritual lifestyle, you want to start or continue your spiritual practice um, or spiritual business, okay, or you are a spiritual leader, religious leader, who would like to put spiritual practice into what you do as a leader, I encourage you to go to my website and book a free discovery call. Let's talk about what you're trying to do and see if it's a good fit. And I can coach you and help you achieve your spiritual ambitions. Okay. So we're at the end of the class. 
We are thankful to our Creator, our Guardian Spirits, our Ancestors, our Spirit Guides, especially our Family Spirit Guides, for the information we've learned today. We acknowledge that the information we got today is not common, is not easily available, so we are grateful that we know of this today. Ashe. Thank you.